I just want to, want to say a few things. Uh, I thank you for receiving us in India. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I bless this land in Jesus' name. I bless India in Jesus' name. And I bless the people of India in Jesus' name. Who can curse what God has blessed? So you are the blessed of God. You are blessed. You are sons of God. You are blessed in Jesus' name. You are blessed in Jesus' name. name. Alright? Hallelujah. Okay. We already received the awesome teaching tonight. I want to keep things really simple now. Let's go to John chapter 6. We were in John chapter 5 earlier. Alright. Just by the show of hands, uh, who is flowing in the ministry of healing the sick already? When you lay your hands, they recover. You see it already. Okay, if your hands going up, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, I I want to uh, impart. I want to encourage. I want to stir up concerning walking in the power of God, laying hands on the sick, seeing them recover. All right. Uh, the world needs signs, wonders, and miracles. Yes. It is a testimony and we show the power and people believe and they and they come to Christ. Wonderful. But you know that when Jesus heals someone, he heals them because he wants them to be healed. He heals them because he loves them and he wants the suffering to stop. I don't care if it's a headache, if it's your small finger that's full of pain, whatever. If, if there's a sickness, Jesus wants to heal the sickness because He loves you. And He wants you to have no pain, no sickness. Okay? Alright. So, uh, I just want to read in John chapter 6. Now, this is a question that people ask all the time. Verse 28. Ooh. Then they said, What are we to do? that we may be working the works of God. What are we to do? So people come to me, what must I still do? What must I still do? (laughs) Oh, I've been doing this and this and this. What must I still do when God, when will God use me to heal the sick? What are we to do to do the works of God? Okay, well Jesus answered the question, so we, we know. Jesus replied, This is the work that God asks of you, that you believe in the one whom he has sent. That's it. What am I to do that God can use me to heal the sick? Believe in the one whom God has sent. What are we to do? (laughs) Believe in the one whom God has sent. Alright, just let's reverse to verse 27. Stop toiling. Ah, oh, what a good word. Yeah, I just don't want to go sit down. <laughs> okay, stop toiling. So this word toiling, this word toiling kind of, it speaks about a struggle, a frustration. People desperately trying to do something to get out of a situation. People trying and trying and trying and not, not succeeding. Toiling. Okay? Laboring. Laboring. Not receiving the result that they require. But laboring. Going for it but seeing nothing. Okay? So, going through hardship without result. Okay. Has any one of you experienced that in your life? You you believe for something. You trust God for something. And you feel, okay, what must I do? Maybe maybe I must try it this way. Maybe I must try it that way. Maybe then God will hear it. Okay, so this is what Jesus said. So, you know, the King James is spoken red, it's Jesus. Is okay. So, stop toiling and doing 
and producing for the food that perishes and decomposes in the using, but strive and work and produce rather for the lasting food which endures continually until life eternal. The Son of Man will give you that. For God the Father has also certified him that it is seal of endorsement. The Son of the Son of God will give you that. All right. All right. Then he says, "What are we to do that we might be working works of God?" He says, "Believe in that one God is." Stop toiling for the food that perishes in the using. Natural stuff. Stop toiling for a natural result. Stop toiling to be sustained by natural stuff, by the natural works. But strive rather. So there's no toiling in it, this is strive. Strive rather. Right? For the food that endures unto life. Okay. But how do I get this food? The Son of Man will give you that. Okay. So, the answer is not in how we push ourselves. The answer is in believing in the one we are sent. The answer is not in getting our flesh in check. That's a good thing. To try... It's a good thing not to do bad things, okay? But if I uh, it makes not confuse the two, the two are very different. If I'm busy with one thing, I will not get another thing's result. Do you hear what I'm saying? If I'm busy uh, Working on a farm, I will not be getting a banker's salary. It's totally different jobs. Okay, not to put the one eye on the other. It's just different. Okay, so if I'm toiling, trying to change myself, I will not get the results of the spirit. Okay, so if I'm trying to feed myself by uh, doing or not doing natural things. I'm not going to be built up in the things of the Spirit. That it does to life and death. Okay. So he says, stop toiling, but strive rather for the food that endures unto life and death. So there's a different source that we need to feed from. This source is Jesus Christ. That gave himself for us. And that source of food, if you read the rest of John chapter 6, it is his body and his blood. His body was broken for us, his blood was poured out for us. He says, strive rather for the food that endures to eternal life. What is this food? This food is the gospel. This food is the word of life. This food is him giving his life, sacrificing himself, so that we could be saved. That is the food that builds us up so that we are alive in spirit. And so that the spirit is active inside us and so that we can doing, do, be doing the same works as the Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Does that make sense to you? All right. So the religious root will not produce it. So he says, stop it. But he says, I will give you another source of food. I will give you the true heavenly bread. He says, this is food indeed. And this is drink indeed. Speaking of his body and his blood. So the word of the gospel is food indeed. It's drink indeed. So us, we will be sustained in spirit and even body by partaking of the sacrifice that Jesus brought of himself. Okay, so that means simply this, believe, believe, believe. 
So there are things that we do in the church, for instance, the baptism. Okay? So the baptism is we we baptize people under water and they come up. So they are and they are raised to a new life in Christ. This is Romans chapter 6. Okay? There's another thing that we do in the church. We partake of the body and the blood, the communion. We eat the bread, we drink the wine or juice or whatever we use, but it's an act of faith. By faith, I'm eating from his body, I'm drinking from his blood. I know it's just bread and it's just juice, but by faith, this is his body, this is his blood. All right, so it is acts of faith demonstrating what we believe. Okay, so that's what he says in 1 Peter 3, speaking of the baptism, he says, uh, baptism is an outward demonstration of what we already believe. We die and we are raised. We don't really kill people and try to raise them. You know, it's like, <laughs> I heard someone say, you know, if, if, if we don't have any purpose on this earth, we should just hold the people under the water of baptism just a little bit longer and send them straight to heaven. <laughs> That's not, <laughs> that's not what we're going to do. So, the, it's not a natural thing, okay? <laughs> so, relax. Oh, this guy's going to kill us. No, no one's going to get drowned. It's fine, okay? So, but we, we are buried and we are raised to a new life. In the same way, partaking of the communion, we are eating of the sacrifice that Jesus brought of, of himself. This is the food that he gave that lasts until life eternal. Okay, so... He says, believe in the one whom God has sent. If I believe in the one whom God has sent, I need to receive what he gave me. Yes. All right. He gave himself. Yes. All right. So now, what are we to do that we might be working the works of God? Believe. So we constantly feed on the gospel that our spirits, our souls, our bodies uh, revived, restored by the message of life. Okay. And then we act. Remember, James, he says, uh, like the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Okay. So faith needs to be acted upon for power to be released. Okay. So if we act on what we believe, we will be surprised what we see. Some years ago, I think in 2003, I, I saw Prophet Kurdish doing all these miracles. Man, I mean, cripples walking. In, in his ministry, over 20,000 cripples walked. 20,000, do you know how many people that is? Okay. Cripples walk. That's only the people getting rid of wheelchairs and walkers and, and cripples. Okay? That's not counting the blind eyes. That's not counting the cancers. That's not counting the deaf ears. That's not counting dead people that were stressed. That's not counting any of that. It's just the cripples, over 20,000. Okay, so I saw him, I would sit there and just, I, just, I would see him running up and down with this energy. And there would be thousands of people standing in front, big church. Then he would just run and say, bless, 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 bless. And the people would just fall out, get up here. Yeah. <laughs> How does this work? Well, he spent his time feasting from the bread of life, yeah. receiving. I was in the prayer tower one time, the, the, the first prayer tower, there's two, two prayers, the, the first one. And I was praying there, praying there between sessions in the, in the conference. And suddenly I felt the whole atmosphere change. I felt something like energy in the room. When I turned around, he came in. <laughs> I felt him walk in, something happened when he walked into the room. Why can a man carry such energy? And such anointing, such power, is constantly feeding from the source of life, Jesus Christ. He was feeding like this. If he had a spirit moment, even sitting in front of the TV, he would sit like before the couch on the on the carpet. Now, as everyone is running around, doing this stuff, watching TV. It's noisy, but he's gone. He's in a revelation. He's just going to the road. Okay? So, I saw his life and I thought, wow, this is something. So, 
The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, your father who sees in secret will reward you in the open. Yeah. Yeah. You see, so, so when you pray, close your door. Go to the most secret room. It doesn't speak of a physical room. It's going to the secret place of the most high, Psalm 91. Okay? Close the door so you shut yourself off from whatever is around you. And you pray to your Father who is in secret. Yeah. And then your Father who sees in secret will reward you with that. Yeah. Uh, so, it's about knowing Him. Yeah. It's, a, it's not about making this big show, oh wow, all these miracles and stuff. It's not about that. That's the fruit of it. Yeah. But the relationship itself is more important. Yeah. So, for an athlete to run, he needs to eat food and train. Okay? <laughs> so, for us as sons of God to minister, we need to eat food. And then we need to exercise. With other words, we keep on doing the works of Christ. We keep on. You exercise your faith. So, you think, my goodness, I've never prophesied over anyone. So, I've asked God for the gift of prophecy. So how will I ever how will I ever see the prophecy coming flowing out of me? Well, maybe I must take a step of faith and stop. I asked him. So then he said, do something, whatever. So he says, give me a hand. Oh, thank you, Lord. Show me something. Then you start seeing something. Or you can just start praying, and when God shows you something, just start saying what you see. And then people say, Wow, that's exactly what's in my heart. Or this happened today. Or Wow, something happened. So how is it released? By faith. Yes. Believe in the one whom God has sent. Okay, so where is the one whom God has sent? Is he in us? Yes. Can he do it? Yes. Will he speak for us? Yes. Then act. Yes. Trust him. Can he heal the sick? Yes. Is he in you? Yes. Then lay your hands on us. Okay, so years ago, 2003, I saw the scripture in Mark chapter 11, Mark chapter 16. He said, go into all of it. Okay? And these signs, he preached the gospel, and these signs will follow them that believe. So I just thought, well, I am them that believe. So the signs must follow. Yes. So, they will cast the devils, they will speak in new languages, even if they pick up serpents from other people. They will lay their hands on the sea and they will recover. Yeah. So, there were no serpents around, so I said to one, one of my friends, well, let's just go and look for sea people. Yeah. <laughs> so, we got a, I had a, a very small little green VW and we, we went, we drove to the, to the very poor area. Okay, like a, a spotter camp. And I just started walking in there and started asking the people, listen, who's got pain? I want to pray for someone who's got pain. The lady looks at me and said, I've got pain. I've got pain in my stomach. So I said, but first she was like, what's this, this random white guy doing here? So, okay, so I said, can I pray for you? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I prayed for her. So I asked, where's the pain? No, the pain is gone. She first says, wow, oh, that's it. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not magic, it's Jesus. So I said, is the pain gone? Yes, the pain is gone. So I was really surprised. So I just said, are you sure the pain is gone? <laughs> she said, yes, the pain is gone. So like, was, was there really pain before? And she said, why don't you want to believe me the pain is gone? Imagine here comes this random guy. He prays for my pain, the pain goes away, now he doesn't want to believe me. <laughs> okay. So then I realized, hey, there's something wrong. Why did that pain go? We acted. That's it. We just did something. We acted. Therefore, the body of Christ acted. Therefore, Christ acted. Okay? So, Jesus is, his hands are tied in the bodies 
of unbelieving believers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's now in them, but they don't want to go and lay their hands on this. And people go, oh, Jesus, you that, heal, heal this one, heal that one, heal that this is, will you please go so I can heal them? So Jesus didn't say, go and sit on a chair and command me to go. He said, go, lay your hands on this. Okay. Yeah. So sometimes we ask God to do the very thing that he told us to go. Okay. <laughs> oh God, will you heal Aunt Susie there in the hospital? He didn't ask you to pray to you, Aunt Susie. He said, go and lay your hands on Aunt Susie. Yeah. Just get me right. You can pray and God can ask. And, but realize it is him inside you. It's, a, it's him doing it through you. Faith action and something happens. Yes. Then he's doing it through your words, through your mouth. But he's using you. Yes. All right. So, the Israelites were in Egypt. And... God heard their crying. Okay. And he came down. He said, Moses, come. Take off your shoes. Okay? Moses took off his shoes. He said, just put it back on. <laughs> 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 just and Moses, take off your shoes. Okay. So Moses took off his shoes and he used this burning bush and the bushes people take his I want you to go and leave out. The Israelites from Egypt. Who shall I say who sent me? Tell them I am a sent you. Okay. Did God go and lead them out? No. no. Moses led them out. Yes. Yeah. God called Moses, led them out. Yes. So then plagues, the whole thing, they came out. Came to the Red Sea. Now what? Now everybody is freaking out because here comes the biggest superpower of the day with the whole army. Trying to kill these people who are unarmed. Yeah. Mm. Now what? Moses, have you led us out into the desert to die? Okay, what's this thing? So Moses comes and he, he cries to God. God says, Hey, why do you cry unto me? You stretch out your hand. Yeah. Mm. So Moses stretches out his hand. Yeah. And the sea opens. Yes. So first, the pillar came in. A pillar of fire came in between them and, and the Egyptians. So they went through the Red Sea. On the other side, imagine now, imagine you're now the Egyptian guy. The sea opens up. There's this big pillar of fire. Then this whole nation goes through the sea. Don't you think the guy that opened the sea can close the Yes. So here they go behind them. We're going to catch you. We're going to catch you. <laughs> And in the middle of the sea, Moses goes like, no, you're not. <laughs> Gone with the Egyptian army. Yes. Imagine you're standing there in the desert, you've got the whole American army, all the jets and all the cannons and all the stuff. You would next to the world like this, like, like Elvis. <laughs> okay, so the, the point is, there was no natural way that you do this. Okay? But a man was used by the Most High God. Stretch out his hand. You see it? Yes. Okay. So, later on, they came to Mount and there was no water. So, you know, despite the rock, and here comes the water. We think it's a little pebble and some little water stream, stream up. It was a massive rock on yeah. top of a mountain. Uh, there's footage of it. Someone, someone uh, took some footage and put it on the internet. It's somewhere in Arabia. It's not the Sinai Peninsula there in Egypt. It's, it's in Arabia. It's a big mountain. You can see how the rock split open. You can see how the rock is smooth because of all the water that came in. And you can see the whole area, a whole lake formed. Because there were millions of people with all their cattle, with all their sheep, and with all their whatever they had with them. Massive, huge, big scale. Yeah. Okay? A man having faith yeah. in God. Okay? Active. Yes. Alright. Gideon. Right? Uh, he, he fought and, and conquered the Midianites of 300. Yeah. How, do you, yeah. how do you do that? Okay. So, it is God calling someone. 
speaking to someone, sending someone. When we do something, we do something small. It's not big to stretch out your hand. God does something big. Yes. <laughs> Opens their ears. Yeah. We do something small. Okay, well, here's someone sitting in a wheelchair, dying with HIV. God does something big. The HIV is yeah. Alright? So, I, I just want to share this testimony. So, a couple of years ago, uh, I went to the Namalwari Hospital, but I've been going there for years. So, uh, yeah, I just remember one day I just declared war on HIV AIDS. I hate it. Yeah. Because it's killing people at a tremendous pace. I don't know how big the, the problem is here in India. I don't know. Is it a big problem? Yes. Okay. In Africa, it's everywhere and people are suffering. Okay, so luckily, uh, God gave some uh, revelations to the medicine people and they got some stuff that at least helps. Okay, the antiretroviral stuff, it helps. So, uh, but I just declared war on that virus. I went twice a week to hospitals and clinics where they, where they uh, dish out these, these uh, antiretroviral drugs. I started praying for people. And this one day, I found this lady. She wasn't infected. She was at the point of death. Okay. Her skin was gray. The African lady, her skin was gray. Full of sores everywhere. Skinny, just skin and bone. Okay, whole body full of pain. No strength, she can't even walk, she can't even, she's sitting there in the wheelchair. Okay, so I just, I, this is just a boldness came over me. And I pulled her out of that wheelchair, but she was so light, it was just. <laughs> okay, I said, Today Jesus is healing you. Okay, and she stood there for a while, she went down. And I put her back into the room, Jesus is the pain is gone. Wow. Okay. That is it. So, maybe two months or so later, I was filling my car with fuel at the, at the filling station. Okay. Here comes this lady. Screams, she's freaking out. She says, this is the guy who prayed for me. This is the guy who prayed for me. She was working. She's back to work. 100% in it. Wow. 100% why was she healed? Because Jesus loves her. And yes. Jesus took that terrible sickness on himself on that cross. Yes. Point number one. Point number two. I said to her, Jesus is healing you today. Yes. And Jesus inside me healed her. Yes. Faith was involved. Yes. If I didn't go, she would have died. Yes. And this is what we as the church need to understand. There's someone desperately needing the miracle on the other side of our obedience. Yes. Okay? So if we take that step, mm. someone else gets their life back. Mm. Alright? If we don't take the step, someone might die. I'm not putting any condemnation on them. You know? If you pray for someone and they die, there's no condemnation. You didn't make them sick. But, guess what? If you pray for someone and they live, yeah, then they can receive something great. Yes. Okay. So it can they can only come good of this. It's not your fault if someone isn't healed. Yes. Because you cannot heal them. Yes. So people tell me, oh, I'm scared of stepping out. Say they don't get it. What if they do? Yes. Say they do get it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so let us not be timid, shrinking back in fear, thinking, oh, I'm gonna look like a fool. I would rather look like a fool. And get the person healed mm. at the risk of nothing happening. Mm. Okay. Then to do nothing and nothing will happen. Mm. If I do nothing, nothing will happen. But there's a good chance that if I do something, at least something will happen. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Alright, so believe in the one God has sent. Alright. So let's just go back to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter 14. So I want you to understand that when you see Jesus Christ, anywhere where he's described, from 
the Gospels, we went about doing good, we did more, we were oppressed of the devil. For God was like, you know, accidentally, it was a description of Jesus. See how he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil. If you see him operating like that, you are seeing your true identity. Okay? So, uh, but also where you see him in Revelation chapter 1 being described in glory, you are seeing the one who is now in you, the Lord of glory. Okay, now if you see him standing there in glory in Revelation chapter 1, his eyes are shining like the sun, face shining like the sun, his eyes like fire. <laughs> Realize that he is inside you. And any principality that there might be is looking at that when they look at you. Yes. So where's the fear now? Okay. So they, he is love. The perfect love casts out all fear. So, there is no reason for us to be afraid. Okay. You see Revelation 1, you see Jesus being described there. Mm. He is in you. That one is in you. Yes. And that's what you look like in spirit. Yes. Okay. So, you cannot be defeated because the victorious one dwells in sunshine. Yes. Okay. You don't have to try and overcome. He already overcame. Yes. Alright. So, John chapter 14 says the following. Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Okay, so he just said it. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Yes. So Jesus came to reveal the Father. If you see Jesus, you see the Father. Now he says, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the sake of the very works themselves. If you cannot trust me, at least let these works that I do in my Father's name be mentioned. He said the same thing in John chapter 10. And right through John, if you read John 5, 6, 7, he speaks about doing what he sees his Father doing. He says, I am, I am not doing anything of myself. I do only what, my, what I see my Father doing. I only say what I see my Father say. Yes. So I am sent by my Father, and I am here to reveal my Father. I do His works, and I say His words. Yes. All right. So it's my Father in me, and I am in the Father. Yes. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Yes. All right. So he says, uh, verse twelve. Oh, the works. Yeah. The works is a testimony. So I am saying the words of the Father. And now I'm doing the miracles, and the Father Himself testifies by the miracle. Amen. So that's the testimony of the Father is the miracle happening, and the word of the Father is spoken by Jesus. Yes. So there are two witnesses going on there. Yes. And you know, Jesus describes it also in the book of John. So it's the words of Jesus and the works that He does, which is the works of the Father. Yes. Alright? So now look at this, John 14 verse 12. I assure you, most solemnly I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will be able to do the things that I do and he will do even greater things than these because I go to my Father. Okay. So if we see Jesus, we see the Father. So now he went into the spirit realm, seated at the right hand of the Father. But we are now in Him, and He is now in us. That means we are now seated in Christ at the right hand of the Father. Yes. So Jesus is continually revealing the words and the works of the Father to us, and we are continually revealing Jesus to the world. Yes. Okay. So as the Father is one with the Son, so also the Son is one with the Church. Yes. Head, yes. body. Yeah. We are one body. We have all one head, which is Jesus. Yeah. Okay. But the body is asking the head to do everything. <laughs> so now the body is sitting on the chair, and now they expect the head to come roll to the front and do everything. <laughs> okay. So here is my head. My body is not sitting on the chair, and my head is jumping up and down trying to speak to you. Okay. Yeah. 
It doesn't work. If the body is not on top, if the head is not on top of the body, the body won't function. Okay. So now the body wants to do its own thing. Now imagine the body that does its own thing. Yeah. That doesn't work. So for, for the body to function, the body must receive the signal from the head and just yield to it and let the personality of the head come through in the body. Yes. Alright? Yes. So we do not need to try and be like Jesus, we just need to be the body. Yes. He is already the head, we are already the body. Yes. It is no effort for my hand to do this. Because the hand is in tune with my brain that tells my hand to do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sending an email to my hand, please. Yeah. <laughs> my hand, would you shake a little bit so that people can laugh? <laughs> and maybe the hand thinks about it, he has a board meeting, maybe you know, it's a democratic vote, they ask, okay, then the hand sends an email back, yes, sorry, the board meeting is sitting there. <laughs> That's not how it works. But that's kind of how it works in a lot of churches because God calls a guy and he says, listen, you should do this. Then the guy goes to the church board. He says, this is what God said. And the church board takes a vote and they say, no, sorry. We don't want you to do that. It doesn't fit in the budget. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we don't write down the budget. We write down the vision. Yeah. We don't ask money what to do. We ask Jesus what to do. Yes. Yeah. We don't get our cues from the back, we get our cues from Jesus. Yes. Alright? And if he says do something, then he will supply it to do that something. Yes. Alright? So, uh, the, the body needs to be in tune with the head. Alright? Okay, so, uh, Jesus said, if you believe in me, you will be able to do the same works that I did. Even greater works than this, because I don't know. Yes. Okay. So, this is my head, this is my body. Okay. So, I'm walking like this. What's that? Well, Gerrit is walking. Yeah. Gerrit is lifting up his hand. Yeah. Gerrit is paging through his Bible. Yeah. You don't give special attention to the hand that's paging through the Bible. Yeah. It's just had a patient through the Bible. Yeah. Okay. It's the same way with the body. Christ is moving us. Yeah. Yes. Christ is walking. Yes. Christ is healing the sick. Yes. Christ is raising the dead. Yes. Yeah. Do we know who we are? Yeah. All right. We are his body. We are the temple. I love what he said about the temple being the meeting place between heaven and earth. Do you not know that you are the temple? Yes. Of, of the Holy Ghost? meeting place of heaven and earth. So even if you take it further, the temple was the place where the Holy of Holies was. Yeah. The Holy of Holies. Yeah. Inside the Holy of Holies there was the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. And on the Ark of the Covenant there was the, the glory of God was, was there. Alright, so guess what? You are the temple. So inside dwells the glory. So you are a walking, talking Holy of Holies. Yes. You are the temple. Wherever you go, God goes. Yes. So, all we need to do is believe in Him. Yeah. All we need to do is get to know Him and let Him move us. Yeah. Okay, it doesn't work like this anymore that, you know, people, people think, oh, God has sent me to this country or that country to be a missionary. Well, God blessed the missionaries, blessed them that did an awesome job. But hear me right. Oh, I now need to go and suffer in China for Jesus. And go and work there until, I don't know. Hey, God calls you by putting a desire in your heart. Yeah. He's not going to give you a job that you, you don't want to do. Yeah. Okay? Sometimes the disobedience is only because of fear. Yeah. Okay? But He works like this. He puts a desire in your heart. Yeah. You think, oh, I want to do this. Oh God, can I do this? Please, can I do this? So if you have a desire to, to flow in some something of the spirit, guess what? You're called to do it. Yeah. <laughs> if you have a desire to heal the sick, guess what? You're called to go heal the sick. Yeah. If you have a desire to know Jesus, you're called to know Jesus. Yeah. So may you have the desires of God. Yeah. May you have this heart. May you have the, 
according to the purposes of his heart. Okay. May he stir up new, fresh desires and, and do something in your life that's so extraordinary. Okay. So, uh, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. So, it's a joyful thing. Yes. It's a happy thing. We are not here thinking, oh my goodness, I don't want to be in India. I want to be at home. <laughs> I love being here. We're enjoying it. It's nice. It's good. It, this is the most awesome thing to us. So thank you for inviting us. Thank you for flying us all the way here so that we can have the privilege to speak to these also. Awesome. Thank you. So we enjoy it. So we're like, we're like dreaming. Oh, sure. Maybe we can one day go and preach in that country. Oh, maybe we will go and preach in that country. Oh, that's going to be good. Guess what? God is placing those things in my heart. I want you to go to that country. I want you to go to that country. Okay? So he's a happy God. He's a joyful God. He's yeah. not sad. He's not angry. He's not grumpy. Okay? He's not grumpy cat. He, he's good. He loves you. <laughs> so, all right. So if we believe in him, we will be the same. Yeah. Yeah. And the works testify of the Father. Yes. All right. Okay. So it is not this difficult. We need to simply respond. To what he has said. We need to understand who we are and trust that he is as good as we think he is. Yes. Guess what? He's much better than we think he is. Yes. If, if I can imagine him good, he's much better. If I imagine him as good as you can, he's better than that. Okay. He's just good. He's better than good. Yes. Okay? So, if you think he wants you to suffer with this problem so that you can learn your lesson, it's not true. Yeah. Okay? Oh, it's God's will that I go through this because he only will teach me something. Yeah. Okay? Are we the bride of Christ? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now, imagine me and my wife you know, we drive to Botswana or to, to Namibia in the desert. Now it's 45 degrees outside. Now I tell her, no, okay, get out of the car, take off your shoes, walk there on the hot rocks. Uh, I'm going to see if you love me. <laughs> let's, see how, let's see how great your character is. Let's test your character a little bit. Okay. okay. After a while, if she gets back in that car, she won't be very happy. Yes. Okay? Why would God do that? Yes. Imagine now, imagine if I kick my wife out of the car to walk in the desert, barefoot and all the rocks. Sharp pointy rocks. <laughs> we all think, no man, you can't do that. I mean, I'm sitting there in the air car, you know, looking at her. Let's see how much she loves me. Okay? <laughs> God doesn't operate like that. Yeah. You think, okay, God is sending me in this bad situation to teach me. No. no. God is sending me the sickness to teach me. No. Yeah. So that's, a, that's some beliefs that's, that's pretty far spread all across the world. It's pretty universal. People think if something bad happens, oh, what did I do wrong? Or they think, oh, God is teaching me something. Or they think all kinds of stuff. Now, if God is teaching me something with a sickness, then why do I go to the doctor to get rid of this awesome lesson of God? <laughs> if I'm going to learn so much from the sickness. If God is teaching me through poverty, why do I go to work to get rid of this awesome gift of poverty? <laughs> then if I, he's going to teach me so much. It's stupid. It's not true. Okay? Poverty is a curse, sickness is a curse. And yes. Jesus became a curse on that cross. For it is written, curse to any man that hangs upon a tree. So that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles yes. through faith. So we believe in Jesus. Now we just receive the blessing freely by grace. Yes. Because Jesus did it for us. Okay. So the, your only teacher is the Holy Spirit. Yes. God doesn't teach you by sickness. God doesn't teach you by. Poverty doesn't teach you by hardship, it teaches you by his word. Yeah. And it teaches you by his Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
All right? So it teaches you also practical things by responding to the book. So certain things you cannot learn by reading a book. Certain things you learn through living it. Yes. And it is like that with human discipline. You don't know how it feels until you do it. Yes. Okay? For instance, if someone is blind, you cannot teach that person what is blue. You can teach him what is a chair, he can feel with his hands, okay, this is a chair, you can sit on the chair, you can know, okay, this is a chair, more or less, this is a chair. But you cannot teach him blue. He first has to have the, the sense of sight and then see blue and learn this is blue. Yeah. He must have the sensation of blue. Yeah. And so it is with the things of the spirit. Yeah. You cannot teach it intellectually. Yeah. It has to be caught in the heart. Yeah. It needs to be imparted and it needs to be received and you learn it as you do it. So you just need to trust it enough to realize that you will do it anyway, whether you've seen it before or not. Yes. So you will learn His goodness as you go out and minister His goodness. Yes. You will learn His power as you go out and lay your hands and seek to minister His power. Yes. Okay? That's called faith. Yes. Faith means you trust something that is unseen so much that you are willing to do something in the scene to demonstrate it. Okay. All right? Okay. So it's not this difficult thing to get this. It's not this difficult thing. We distinguish between sicknesses. Okay. The headache is easy. The back pain is more difficult. The heart attack is very difficult. And raising the dead, oh, that's the big mama. That is so incredibly difficult. Uh, maybe not now. I, can, I think maybe five years. Then five years come, you think, uh, <laughs> that's just how we think. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a lady in our church. Who was it? Uh, Monique went out with us. First time in her life praying for a sick person. The first person she, she met, then I just said, you minister. So she said, okay, what do I pray for? Oh, I'm deaf. <laughs> First one. She said, what should I do? You like that? She said, no, just pray like anything else. So she prayed, here's her. Yeah. First one. Don't distinguish. Don't make levels. Don't disqualify yourself thinking, yeah. ooh, I'm not at that level. You are at Christ's level. Yes. Yes. Okay, so everything you can do, you can do. Alright? So, uh, he said, if you believe, you will do the works that I do, and even greater works. So even Jesus, he's not uh, insecure about it. He wants you to do bigger things than he, even he did. So he will, do, he will demonstrate through you bigger things than he did himself. Yes. He's not insecure. Yes. Okay? He just wants to help you. Yes. So even if there's no arm, why not grow out an arm? Yes. Okay? Why not? If there's a dead person, you can raise the dead. Yes. So let's just get a mindset of miracles. Let's just get a mindset that nothing is impossible. Yes. So all things are possible for them that believe. Yeah. With God, nothing is impossible. Yes. All things are possible to them that believe. With God, Nothing is impossible. Okay, so he is inside you. Nothing is impossible. Yes. All right. So remember when the angel appeared to Mary. The angel said to Mary, "You will become pregnant." Okay. And the only thing that you will be born of you is be called Emmanuel, God is with us. Okay. She responded. She said, "How shall this be?" Yeah. Because I have not known a man. Okay. She didn't say, oh no, this. she said, how? <laughs> how does this work? Yeah. Okay. Then the angel responded and said, 
the Holy Spirit wow. shall come upon you. Yes. And you will conceive. Yes. How shall it be? Simple. The Holy Spirit. Yes. How shall it be? The Holy Spirit. Wow. Okay, so do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes. yes. Do you have Christ inside you? Yes. yes. Okay, how shall it be? Oh, okay, so if I think, oh my goodness, God has given me this impossible task, you're right, it is impossible <laughs> for you. <laughs> but he, he does it himself through you. Yes. Yes. How awesome is that? Luckily, he didn't say, I will go lay my hands on the sick and you hear yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But he just said, these signs will follow them that believe. So you don't even care how, you just do it. Yeah. <laughs> I am them that believe. Plans and see, plans and see, plans and see. Yes. Okay, stand back. Where's the signs? Okay, where's your brain? Gone. Okay, there's the sign. Let's go. Okay. So, this is something that David Hogan says a lot. He says, I don't run after miracles. Miracles run after me. I don't go for miracles. Miracles follow me. Alright? So, uh, so that is how it is. Uh, Jesus Christ is with us and he will do the same things. Okay, so I will also want to touch on John chapter 17. What's the time? How long have I been going? Uh, okay, alright, so I'm almost done. Are you still awake? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Still breathing? Yeah. Yeah. Still taking something in? Yeah. Am I not boring you to death? No. no. Okay, great. Okay, great. I'm going to bore you to life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, John chapter 17. Can I read a few verses here and there? Because if, if I go through the whole thing, we'll be here till the sun shines again. Okay so, okay, so John chapter 17, verse 3 says, And this is eternal life. It means to know. You, the only true real God. Yeah. And likewise, to know Him, Jesus, as the Christ whom you have sent. So living in Him, knowing Him, eternal life. Yeah. Okay, this is eternal life. To know the true God, to know Jesus whom He has sent. Yeah. Okay, right, so. Verse 10, all things that are mine are yours. My goodness. I'm going to read it again because I don't know if anyone out. All things that are mine are yours. And all things that are yours belong to me. And I am glorified through them. Okay, so everything that belongs to us belongs to Jesus. Big deal. But everything that belongs to him <laughs> belongs to us. <laughs> okay. So everything that is ours is his. So when he says give, we give. Yes. If he says give your car, I give my car. If he says give that, I give that. If he says give this, I give this. Yeah. Uh, but do we know that all things that belong to him belong to us? Yes. Yes. Okay, that's great. That's good news. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to throw that one in there. Okay. So let's read from verse 17. I want, I want you to just to see how one we are with him. Okay? There is no distinction between you and Jesus. Okay? Okay, I'm say, I said I'm going to stop in John 17, so I just want to throw this one in without waiting there. So, <laughs> 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 says, we, uh, you know, I'm of the opinion that if one died, then all died. Yeah. Okay? And he died so that we might live for him. Okay, so he says, uh, the love of Christ moves us and impels us because we're of the opinion that if one died, we'll die. Okay, so if we have the revelation of I've been crucified with Christ, not either of Christ lives with me. If we understand that, the love of Christ moves us. So now it's no longer a sinful desire moving us. Now it's the love of Christ moving us. So it's not us trying to fight our desires anymore. There's a war inside going on. Oh, I mustn't do this. 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 Oh, I did it again. Okay? 
like when people try to diet, I'm not going to eat that cake. 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 Wait till you get the waste of cake. <laughs> people feel bad about the stuff all the time, okay? Right, so it's not like that. There's war going on inside, right? Now each love comes to abide and dwell in very much. That love starts to be us. So now we get to know this love. We start to get to know this person that's inside us. Suddenly, we get to know the Spirit and we realize, shocked it's the desire of the Spirit that this person will be. You see someone, you can just prophesy the truth because you know it's the desire of the truth of the, of the Spirit to, to solve that solution. You can solve that problem. <laughs> solve the solution. To solve the problem. So you can just speak it the way it's supposed to be because that's the desire of the Spirit. Once you get to know Him and what His will is, you can speak into people's lives and it, it will just happen like this because that's what He wants. Okay, so Jesus coming to the man at the bath of the first time. Do you want to walk? Oh, I got no one to put me in the pool. Just rise up, take a bit of walk. Not for hello, I am Jesus. What are you doing? Did you do anything wrong in your life? Okay, maybe I'll come back in two weeks if you want to listen. Did you go? Did you repeat everything? Did you do this? Did you confess? No, he doesn't even ask his name. He says, hey, do you want to walk? Walk, get out. <laughs> Is the spirit desiring to let this guy walk? So that's his whole sermon. In Matthew chapter 9, there's Jesus and there's, there's this lame man. Imagine we are having this meeting and suddenly it's just stuff falling from the roof and the of the roof and here comes this guy. It's just dust and everybody's choking. And Jesus is looking at this guy and says, Take care. Oh, take courage. Your sins are forgiven. Yeah. And all the grumpy cat Pharisees are like, You is a Jesus, hey, what's easier for me to say? Your sins are forgiven, rise up and walk. But to prove to you that God has given to man the authority to forgive sins, I say to you, rise up, take your bed and walk. Yeah. And he got up and took his bed and walk. That it was the Sabbath. Yeah. <laughs> so they were. <laughs> okay. All right. So, do you see how easily Jesus ministered? Yeah. Yes. Very short sermon. He didn't even say hi. He just said, rise up, take your bed. Your sins are forgiven, rise up, take your, take your bed and go. Amen. <laughs> That's the whole sermon. Yes. Not many words. And the man gets up, there he goes. Alright? So, if you know the desire of the Spirit, you can speak it and see results. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Right, so John chapter 17, <coughs> verse 17. Now, this is Jesus, the Son of God, Himself, praying for you. Mm. Okay? So let's just read this prayer. Okay. Sanctify them. Purify, consecrate, separate them for yourself. Make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. Okay, have you heard the word? Okay, you are sanctified. Okay, verse 18. Just as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. Ah. So just as the Father has sent Jesus to <laughs> preach the kingdom and to perform signs and wonders and miracles, just as so Jesus has sent us into the world. Yeah. The same mandate, the same authority. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so for their sake and on their behalf, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified in the truth. Neither for these alone do I pray. It's not for their sake only that I make this request, but also for all those who will ever come to believe on me through their word their teaching. So that includes all of us. We, we believe through their word and their teaching. So that includes us. So he prays for us. That they may be one. Hallelujah. That they may be one. Just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you are sent me. Okay. How will the world believe that Jesus was sent to if we are one with him and he is one with us. If the world can see Jesus in us, yes. then they will be convinced 
I have given to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. I in them, you in me, in order that they may become one and perfectly united, that the world may know and definitely recognize that you have sent me, that you have loved them just as you have loved me. So if, if we are one with Jesus, the world will, will start to see love. Yes. They will start to feel the love. Verse 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you have entrusted to me as your gift to me may be with me where I am, so that they may see my glory which you have given me, given me your love gift to, uh, to me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. O oh, just and righteous Father, although the world has not known you and has failed to recognize you and has never acknowledged you, I have known you continually, and these men understand and know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and revealed your character, your very self, and I will continue to make you known that the love which you have bestowed upon me may be in them, felt in their hearts, and that I myself may be. So he wants the love of the Father, the name of the Father, to be declared to us. He wants the love of the Father, the name of the Father, to be experienced in our hearts. Okay? And if we experience it in our hearts, it's so that he, he, he himself may be it. God is love. Okay? Alright, so, uh, what are we to do that we may be working the works of God? Believe Simply believe in Him. To get to know Him, to realize who He is, and to work with Him. To respond to Him. And that's it. It's not going to take grueling, grueling that. All the sacrifice and all that sacrifice. No, it took the sacrifice of Jesus. So we can simply believe, hear, feed on the truth, be built up, and go and bless the world. Alright. Right, so I just want to pray. Lord Jesus, I just pray that you reveal yourself. Let us experience you in our hearts. Let our hearts be filled and flooded. Let us be imparted by your grace. Let us do the works of Christ and even greater. I pray that we will see a dramatic increase in the fruit of power. I pray that we will see a dramatic increase in signs and wonders and miracles. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Amen.